You have you reached, reached Deception, Deception Detection, Detection Radio, Radio with K from the Deception, Deception Detection, Detection Network. Network. Please, Please stay, stay on the line while I connect you with the truth. truth. Tonight, we have a very special guest. She's the owner of Next Chapter Radio, and she broadcasts a weekly program called Next Chapter Radio. She's a music producer, a musician, and she does all the, her own music for her show. And she's a very gifted woman and a warrior of God. I would like to welcome Mary Callie to our show. Welcome, Mary. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing, Kay? I am truly blessed. Thank you very much. That's so good. great to That's have good. you on the show. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, would you like to let everyone know about you and um, if they want to contact you and listen to you, how they can go about doing that? Sure, no problem. As you stated earlier, I am the owner of uh, Next Chapter Radio, but uh, we also own, or I should say, when I say we, I say uh, myself and Justin Fall. I am also a part of the Fourth Watch Radio Network with um, my buddy Justin Fall. And of course, doing online radio, I've been doing it for some years, but making a long story short, let's just say God has pretty much called me to stop playing around and uh, you need to get yourself together and do what you're supposed to do, what I called you to do. So here I am now exposing the devices of Satan and what he's doing to the people of this earth, because I think people need to understand what's going on. I am a musician, as you said. I've been playing uh, piano and keyboards and organ since I was two and a half years old. I don't read music. I play everything by ear. Married, a stepson. Uh, I am a preacher's daughter, and uh, I'm very blessed. Very blessed. Praise God. That's wonderful. Would you like to uh, tell everyone how about your show, where they can listen to you at and uh, contact you? Sure. Uh, you can actually listen to me on Spreaker, or you can go to iTunes, and you can actually type in uh, Next Chapter Radio, and, of course, I'll come up there, or you can go to Spreaker and type in Next Chapter Radio, and same thing there. Or you can go to Next Chapter Radio at blogspot.com, and you can listen to uh, the shows there. There are weekly shows there up on Mondays. Or you can email me if you need to contact me as well. Uh, one of the things that we do have and that we're doing in the, in the ministry is we're giving away free Bibles. So anybody who needs a Bible who's given their life to Christ, or if you just don't have one, you can't afford one, give me a, give me a shout out. Just um, email me. Just say uh, nextchapterradio at gmail.com and say, hey, Mary, I need a Bible. Give me your name and your address and I'll send it to you. No problems. So That's wonderful that you're able to do that. Would you like to say tonight's opening prayer for us? Sure would. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening as we attempt to expose Satan and his evil ways. You know, Hosea 6 says, my people are destroyed due to lack of knowledge. And Satan is definitely doing his part by keeping people in the dark. But we know that you, Lord Jesus, are the light. Now, as we expose his evil devices, his plots, his deceptions. We ask that you put a hedge of protection around the people who are listening, the hosts, the people who are controlling this broadcast, myself and anyone else who may be a part of this, because after all, we know that he is not here to help us. He is here to still kill and destroy. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Mary. One thing, uh, listeners, I would like to tell you is if, uh, if you're able to, grab a pen and paper. You're going to want to jot some things down. Um, that's one thing that, for me, listening to Mary's show that I've learned. So you may hear my papers rattling a little bit, but you may <laughs> want to take notes. And uh, I encourage everyone to listen to Next Chapter Radio. Uh, Mary has a wonderful show, very informative. It just It's an enlightening show, so I encourage all of you to please take a listen to it. Uh, tonight we're going to be getting into our founding fathers that 
how we really are not a Christian, we're never really a Christian nation and the origins, and uh, some will shock, some, it's intended to uh, open your eyes, and we will be taking callers, so if you would like to call in, please do that. Mary, where would you like us to uh, get started on this? Uh, It's quite a journey. Well, actually, it is, it is. Uh, We're on the, first of all, let's start with a little overview here. We, We are under the impression here, because we've been manipulated and programmed and conditioned to think that the founding fathers were Christians and, of course, in the United States was or and still is a Christian nation. I got news for you. It never was, never has been. The uh, closest we got to being Christians as far as being a Christian nation is when the Puritans came over here. Now, we understand the Puritans. They went a little bit overboard with that you know, with the with the Bible, they started killing people, and you know everybody's a witch and all of that stuff. But nevertheless, they base their principles and even the structure of their community around the Bible. Whereas today, it's not like that. And 150 years past the Puritans is when it got dirty. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. So, despite what you heard and despite what you've learned in your textbooks. It is not what you think it is. If you really want to know what's going on, I'm just going to tell you right up front, you might want to visit the Library of Congress. You can go online. You can look up this information yourself. Uh, There's a lot of documentation out there, uh, different things like um, memoirs that your founding fathers have pretty much wrote up, and they're saying it in their own handwriting, in their own penmanship. You know, they're not Christians, and, and it's sad to say But this is the reason why we have the problems that we're having in this world right now. We are a nation of infidels. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but Mm -hmm. we we are just radical when it comes down to our religious beliefs. We are not just one thing. We're multiple things, and we think that's freedom, but it's not freedom. It's causing problems now. Um, So let's just start with the beginning as far as the Founding Fathers is concerned. Now, how many people think... Uh, let me ask this question. Here's one for you, Kay. Okay. Charles Thompson. You ever you ever heard of him? Just some, uh, not in much detail. I'd like to have you enlighten me a little bit. Okay. Well, Charles Thompson. You you won't see him in your textbooks or anything. This guy was the was the uh, congressional secretary from 1784 to like 1789, and what he did. It's really it's really funny, y'all. This is the guy that really knew what went on during the Revolutionary War. He documented everything. I mean, he wrote down every and if a but. Everything that Jefferson did, everything that Adams did, everything that Washington did, he wrote it down. But the thing is, is that he realized that what he was writing was contradicting what the public thought of these men. And he had to make a decision, like, okay, all right, look, these, you know, the public thinks that these are men of valor and honor and they're just and they're virtuous and they're this and they're that, everything good and they're Christian. And what I'm writing down is not that. <laughs> you know, they're not, he was shedding the light on his dirty laundry. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly what he was doing. It's just crazy. So you know what he did? I guess he must have thought about it. You know, he was like, okay, if I put this out, you know, I'm gonna be dead tomorrow, right? So let me just go ahead and tear this up. So he pretty much he did. He tore it up. He pretty much tore up his memoirs of what really went on in the Revolutionary War, and he made up his mind that he didn't want. To undeceive, now notice the word I'm using, undeceive the future generations of the United States. Now, most people try not to deceive people. He doesn't want us to be undeceived. He wants us to be deceived based on what people already thought of these men. And this is what is in your history books. Now, you know, mm-hmm. you see a lot of stuff in your history books. Believe me, it's not history. It's just made up stuff that they want the public to know. But this guy pretty much did that, and, you know, he just didn't make it public. Let people think what they're going to think about him, whatever. <laughs> you know, I know otherwise. That's that's pretty much, that was his that was his take on things. I think if they would go in and write the history books the way that history actually happened, 
I think there would be such an uproar in this country over the fact of how we've been deceived for so long. So many names have been left out, so many events. Exactly. A lot of events have been left out, but here's the thing. Even with me saying what I'm saying right now, you're going to get some so-called patriots, patriots, okay, who will say, that's not right. That's not what our textbooks say. That's not what this one said. This is not what that one said. You know, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, people. (sighs) They pretty much did the, what do you want to call that thing where that, um, I don't know. They did that. This is you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. You know, don't look over here. Look over there. That's what they did, <laughs> pretty mm-hmm. much. Um, they it, it's it's sad because we live in a society where this whole it's a facade. It's a deception, and we've been brought up to think that these people are. I mean, kids do their book reports after these people. <laughs> you That's know, right. do your book report. On, on the, your president, what president you thought, you know, I did my report on George Washington, yada, yada, yada. But the thing is, is that all that information is incorrect. But yet we'll give little Johnny an A plus if he gets what's in that history book correct, even though the information is incorrect. And that's not, mm-hmm. that's not right. That's not and right. And the people also teaching something. the information, they aren't, don't know any better because they're taught out of the history books too. Exactly. And so this is a trickle-down effect. Again, it goes back to what Charles Thompson says. You know, he will not interfere. In other words, he's not going to under or undeceive the future generations. I'm not going to tell the truth about what's really happening here and who these people are that are putting things in place. I'm not doing it. (laughs) So let them be deceived. You know, it's almost like, well, let them think. It's like rose-colored glasses. Let them continue to think everything is rosy, everything is this, everything is that. But the real thing is when you take the glasses off, it's just a mess. Like somebody who's got on makeup. You ever seen somebody who put on makeup? They look beautiful. Then when they take the makeup off, they look, oh, just like 10 miles of bad road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, yes, they it's like that. small children. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's you know, re- reality is is scary. Now, this guy also was the final say so when it comes down to the seal on the dollar bill. He was the one that gave his stamp of approval. This is okay that we see on a dollar bill. Okay, mm-hmm. so he was the it guy. All right. Now, something that a lot of people don't realize is that we're we're really this country because it's not a Christian com- country is really under the spirit of Antichrist. Now, notice I didn't say it's under the man Antichrist. It's under the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit, being under the spirit of Antichrist basically means that you are against Christ. You're not for him, you're against an anti. And that's Mm -hmm. exactly where we are now. It's just even worse. It's just so much worse now. But we are definitely under that because First of all, a lot of people don't know that the founding fathers, Jefferson, Adams, Washington, I mean, even I'm going to include, you know, Charles Thompson. I'm going to include also uh, Mr. Payne, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Payne himself. Uh, they, these guys, you know, Thomas Payne, they they denied the gospel. Matter of fact, they thought, you know, I, I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into Thomas Payne and. And and these cats, and I mean, Thomas Paine was just, oh, my goodness. This guy was like, you know, saying the Bible was a fable. It was right. like a storyteller. You know, and that's just not cool at all. At all. No. So. No. And it's getting worse every day. And it's just to think that it started so long ago. And, and back when it started, it was pretty much hidden. But today it mm-hmm. is just in your face. You you can't look anywhere without seeing that that spirit of the, the Antichrist everywhere. But back in the days of our founding fathers, this was something that they wanted swept under the rug. And we've evolved oh, yeah. so much that now it's just like commonplace and it shouldn't be. That's true. It shouldn't be, but it's going to be because we were never rooted and grounded. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not the hymn you know, th- this country is not built like the hymn, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. You know, this, you know right. the solid rock I stand. You know, we're not built on solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. We're built on something else. Sin and, and that's why we're shaky right now. Yeah, Our foundation is really, 
yeah, we're on the sand and we're just shifting and sifting and sinkholes and everything else is going on. I mean, because of the fact that we're not on solid rock, I stand on all other ground is sinking sand. We're in that sinking sand. That's that's what we're on. Mm-hmm. We're not on that solid rock, which is Christianity, which is, you know, building your house upon that rock, which is Jesus Christ. We, we They denied it, yeah. you know, and like I said, I'm going to get a little bit more deeper into that. Well, I'm looking forward to that because you've got a lot of information on this. Um, we do. I, well, I, should, I keep saying we do, but, you know, uh, there is a lot <laughs> of information out there. I, I, again, I can't even... I could get a little bit, let, let me go into Thomas Paine before I even go into the other part. You know, there's another person, like I said, Charles Thompson, you know, he was kind of like a founding father, but a lot of people don't know that Thomas Paine was kind of like a founding father too. Just because he didn't right. sign anything doesn't mean he wasn't in on it, you know, because basically mm-hmm. Thomas Paine was really good friends with Washington, with Jefferson, and Adams. And Thomas Paine wrote a pamphlet called Common Sense, okay? You can go and you could probably get it on Kindle or maybe on your iPad or something, but it's out there. It's old as can be. It's old as dirt, but it (laughs) is out there. It's called Common Sense. And what it is is this dude, basically, he wasn't even a citizen of the U.S. He was an Englishman. That's what he was, all right? Really? He had the hookup. Yeah, he was an Englishman. He he wasn't even a he wasn't even a citizen he wasn't even he was a subject of England and uh, people don't even real it, it, yeah I know right but yet he had his hands over here in our pot he he was mixing up dough over here if you know what I mean he was putting his ingredients yeah. into the making of this country you know by being and he influenced a lot of the so called quote unquote founding fathers into this sort of belief system now what he believed was that basically you didn't need the Bible. You didn't need it at all. He basically came up with something, like I said, called common sense. And what it did was get you thinking about, it, it got you thinking about using your reasoning. Just using, you know, just come on. Just You hear people say it all. Why don't you just use common sense? Why don't you just use your head? Why don't you just use your own, you know, your own knowledge, your own this, your own that? Can't you think straight common sense? Okay, so that's basically it. They basically went off of that versus anything else. And, of course, Ben Franklin, you know, kind of hooked him up with being over here and, you know, was like, hey, I like your ideas. You know, I got a printing mm-hmm. press. I'll hook, I'll hook you up. You print what you got there and we'll get it out there. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, they kind of hooked up. Benjamin Franklin had the printing press. Because that first common sense was just in his memoirs. It was just something that he was just, you know, scratching down for, for himself. But Ben Franklin got a hold of it and was like, man, this is good. You know, I, I believe pretty much the same way. Next thing you know, they're distributing this thing. It's going all over the place, you know. And <laughs> More than the Bible. <laughs> More than the Bible. Exactly. You know, and matter of fact, Thomas Paine, a lot of people don't know this, he came up with the phrase, the United States of America. It wasn't your founding fathers. It was him. He came up with that phrase, the United States of America. And he that also really wrote something strange. else. It, it, isn't it strange? Okay. Now, check this out. He also came up with another book called The Age of Reason. Now. I've heard of that. Let me explain. You heard of that? You can get that I've one on Kindle it. and all that, too. Old book, got dust on it. You can get that, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The age, of, the age of reason has to do with a deity. When you see the Statue of Liberty, what do you see? I see it's supposed to represent freedom. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to be ours and any of the immigrants that are coming over. But I know what it really means, so I don't have that that sense of like I'm supposed to have when I look at it, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. But I don't have that feeling uh, that you're supposed to get that like, well, wow, I'm really happy that that represents the country that I live in. It's just not there because, but it's supposed to be for freedom and welcoming new immigrants. Okay. What do you think the light represents? That torch 
what do you torch, think that represents? It represents the illuminous. Okay. So the illuminous where did the statue come light. from? It came from a man named Bartoli, and it was founded by um, France, I believe. Let's see, it was uh, you say Bar- Bartoli. You say Bar- August Bartoli made. And you said it came. It came from where? I thought France. I may be off on that. You're, 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 you're exactly right. Okay, but here, here's the kicker on this. That statue is not statue is not Lady, Lady Liberty. Stop calling her that. You're calling her by her wrong name. And I'm sure if the statue was alive, it would tell you that. That mm-hmm. statue is called the Statue of Reason. It is a deity. There's statues like that that were back in the 1700s in France, which basically was their goddess. It's a goddess called Reason. That's what the whole philosophy is about the whole philosophy is about that and the thing is is that they made a replica and they sent it over here because guess what we're a part of we are part of the illuminati it's it's a it's a signal to the illuminati the original illuminati that we have arrived we are on board our country is with you they are mm-hmm. illuminous here they the or they have the idea of the enlightened ones, as they like to call themselves. And they're not enlightened. They're just, they're in darkness. <laughs> they just don't realize that they're in darkness. Right. There's nothing light about them. Okay? And mm-hmm. that's that's what that is for. That is not Lady Liberty. I'm sorry to tell people that. So, you know, 4th of July is going to come around, and I'm going to have you looking at things real different, real different, mm-hmm. because it's not what you think it is. Okay? Um, mm-hmm. So we need to get away from that. Now, I, there's something that I want to want to say here as far as going back to what Thomas Paine said about the Bible being a fable, being just a, you know, a bunch of tales and whatnot. You know, he didn't believe in God. And he said something that if you go through and read through his memoirs, and like I said, you can find all this stuff at the Library of Congress. If you look through his memoirs, he quoted something. He pretty much said that the Bible... It is the fable of Jesus Christ as told in the New Testament and the, and the wild and visionary doctrine raised thereon against which I contend, which means he thinks it's a fable, it's not true, and he's going to contend against it. He's going to fight against it. He doesn't want to hear it. It doesn't need to be here. Okay, we need to use our mind. We need to use reason. We need to use common sense. That's what we need to base building this country on, those things mm-hmm. and those things alone. And it's sad, but he had a great part in the way that this country is formed. If it wasn't for this guy, I think it might have turned out a little bit different, but because he had some connections and because he thought a certain way, it kind of sparked up things in the others. And they all, you know, like they say, birds of a feather flock together. So he would, he was one of those things. But he also was against the, like I say, was against the gospel completely. Did not like it at all. Didn't believe in the, the virgin birth at all. His thoughts and his philosophy is based on the, French Enlightenment group that worships, like I said, a goddess called Reason. You know, and that's pagan. That's pagan. Yes, you know, that is, is just straight pagan. And if you want information on that, I advise you by all means, look it up. <laughs> just look it up. Just you got a question for I've, me? Yeah, I've heard that. Um, also, that the Statue of Liberty was called by the Freemasons the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mm-hmm. Has that, yeah. that right there says it all. It does. We have it says a lot. I mean, a reminder fr- right there. Well, you have to understand the Illuminati actually created Freemasons. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't realize that the Illuminati actually comes from Bulgaria, if I'm not mistaken, 
uh, someplace out there. Let me see if I can find this. Bolaria. Bal- well, I think it's me. Bavaria? Bavaria. Bavaria. I always get those mixed up. Bavaria is where the first place countries. of the Illuminati <laughs> is. I know, right. One of them big countries over there that nobody really cares about. You know? <laughs> nobody knows where it is. and You don't even know how to get a flight there. You know, just... <laughs> You're trying to ask yourself, do they have money? People actually live there. What's the population? What's the state flat? I mean, you don't, you just don't know. But <laughs> Bavaria is the birthplace of the Illuminati, actually, and of course of Freemason and of uh, occultism and alchemy. You know, it, it, they're all wrapped up in the one. You know, so mm-hmm. and of course we all know that Adam Adam Weishaupt is the one who brought it into play in 1776, and he was a Freemason. All of the founding fathers were Freemasons. Everyone. Now, you can't get no more occultic and satanic than that. You think it's a Christian nation. You still think it's a Christian nation, people? It ain't. It ain't. Yeah. Take the blinders off. You know, I'm afraid you're going to have to stop crawling on the floor like an infant and stand up like a toddler and take that first step because it is, <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. Not what you think it is. We and, and it's disappointing. It's very disappointing. It because I wonder of why they put in there there would be a um, separation of church and state. Was that just for show? When they were writing everything up, well, to tell you this, um, how can I put this? If you had said separation of church and state way back then, oh my goodness, that would have been the worst thing ever. But in today's world we look for that we're like oh we got to have separation of church and state honestly if you really look at it from a biblical standpoint the church should run and i know i'm gonna get slapped for this and people are going to be like no no it should be separated but no you should have this church running the state because there's got to be some sort of values and standards set other than man's own intelligence because man's own intelligence is limited god's knowledge and god's discernment and God's ability is much more potent than man's. So why not mm-hmm. lay your foundation why not lay your foundation of your country or your state or your city or your town or whatever built on the word of God? Why is that such a bad thing to do? I think if it was on the word of God, you wouldn't have the problems you have today because Honestly, it's not difficult at all to follow the word of God. It's just that for some reason we get real comfortable in our sin. And, you know, once we start sinning and doing stuff, it starts feeling good or whatever the case may be, we don't want to give it up. And that's that, that you know, that natural side of man, that sinful side of man. Mm-hmm. But we need to get move past that and we need to understand that you can't go on through life like that, that you can't run a country like that, that you can't run your life like that. It's going to fall. The house of cards are going to fall. And it ain't going to be economic. I mean, you're just going to fall morally. Our moral compass is completely off balance because we have no, because we have separation of church and state. The reason why we have problems in the school is because we have separation of church and state. The reason why... Mm-hmm. The system is breaking down. The judicial system is breaking down. Is because we have separation of church and state. The reason why we have these jacked up laws and we have presidents that are in office that are puppets is because we have a separation of church and state. You follow what I'm saying? Because we have this separation, we what we're doing is we're saying we're cutting God out of these situations. We're cutting God from being involved in these things. We don't want him there. And now this is what you get. And then we complain about what we got. Well, shoot, you put, you, you made it happen. <laughs> right. I mean, if, you, uh, if we would follow what is written in the Bible, we would have our, our economic system set up correctly. We would have our judicial system set up correctly. We would have everything. I mean, it's right there. And as a society, I believe that we make things more difficult than if we would just go ahead and and listen to God and do what he says, and then everything would fall into place. We're not supposed to lean on our own understanding. And that's what everyone is doing, and that's why we're all such a mess. Yeah, that's true. 
you know, and to be honest with you, let's take it one step further. First of all, with having a statue of anything is idolatry. It truly is. Yes. And the fact that we, first of all, we've already screwed up. And yes, I said screwed up. Okay. We've already screwed up by, first of all, calling these men founding fathers. You're not supposed to call anybody in father. We only have one father. He's in heaven. Number two, we're messing up one of the Ten Commandments with idolatry by letting something like that come into your house, basically, your country, and setting it up as a symbol. You're putting a satanic symbol in your space and saying, okay, this represents us. And then you're number <laughs> number three, you're lying to the public and telling them it means this when in secret, because this is part of secret society stuff, you're saying this is what it really is, but we're not going to tell them this. That. We're going to tell them it's this. It's like telling a little kid, Santa Claus is coming. You better be good knowing that there is no Santa Claus. Exactly. It's, <laughs> you so know, it's, just, good. <laughs> it's just twisted and deception. Then the kid gets older, realizes there's no, ch- no Santa Claus, and now they're looking at you with real funny. You know, <laughs> they're looking at you real funny like, mm-hmm. I can't trust nothing, you say. And that's how we should be yeah. looking at a lot of things. We should be looking at politicians the same way. We should be looking at people who are pimping this agenda, saying, you know, I can't trust you. And then we should try to find the truth instead of just saying, oh, well. We should start researching and finding, finding out, well, okay, who's actually in my house? What's really going on here? But, no, we don't do that. What we do is we go by what's on TV, mainstream media. You know, like I said, we got mm-hmm. some holiday, holidays that are coming up. We have Easter coming up. That's a totally different subject. But then you have Memorial Day coming up, and then you have, of course, Fourth of July. That's going to be coming up. And people are going to be out there with their flags and trying to be patriotic, and, and there's no such thing. <laughs> I mean, you know, no. I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to be a buzzkill. I'm just a realist. I'm just a realist. And Let's that's be what real we need. That. This this isn't a reality show, and sometimes I feel like people look at life anymore as a reality show, that they just follow the motions day to day. They don't use any discernment in any part of their life, and it gets us all into trouble. It, it does. And we can, all fall, we can all fall victim to that very mm-hmm. easily. That's why we have to you know, stay vigilant and, and just keep discerning. And making sure that that everything fits in with what God wants us to live. Exactly. Now, let me tell you something else to this dude. And like I said, we're still on Thomas Paine. Let me tell you something else about this dude. Okay, and yes, I called him dude. Okay? (laughs) Because I have no respect for anybody like this. None. Absolutely no respect. Okay? He pretty much thinks that if, if it seems unreasonable to the human mind to understand, then it should be rejected. So one of the things, like I said, they want to get rid of the gospel. They have a hard time dealing with the virgin birth. They have a hard time dealing with the immaculate conception of Jesus Christ, that God is his father, that his mother was truly a virgin. They have problems with miracles. They have problems with supernatural things taking place. And, you know, I mean, they don't realize that this is a spiritual thing that's going on. This has nothing to do with the flesh, even though God came to us in the flesh in the form of Jesus Christ. So they have a big problem with that. Therefore, they say dismiss it. You know what I'm saying? They're just saying dismiss it. What they're doing is something like this. Okay, they say, okay, you're saying that you got pregnant and nobody, and pardon me for saying this, you might want to put the explicit sign on on your show, but but (laughs) nobody penetrated you. Nobody, you didn't lay down with anybody and bump any bellies and you're pregnant. Okay, well, we're going to get 20 women together and we're going to get 20, 20 women who are virgins together and we're going to sit back for a a length of time and see whether or not they get pregnant without anything happening. Okay, those 20 women didn't get pregnant, so obviously that can't be real. Then they reject it. They throw it out the window because they don't realize that God is beyond our understanding, and God works in levels that we don't know anything about. This is a spiritual thing. It has nothing right. to do with your physical. And for some reason, again, it's called, it's, it's called you be, you're too smart for yourself. You're leaning towards, like you say, your own understanding. You've got your own philosophies. You've got your own truth. And you got your own mess now. Because <laughs> you know, this is a mess. Yeah, and there's no way for for you to clean it back up because you've made such a mess and you don't know where to start. That's true. That is absolutely true. You know, and he even went so far as to say, my mind is my own church. So he, 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 what's in his mind, that's his church. That's How's a scary that conce- thought. Yeah, that's a scary thought. And how conceited is that? Yeah, he he's putting himself on the same level as God, and that just doesn't work. 
He doesn't think it should be even called the word of God. He said he should be called the word of demons. That's how demonic mm-hmm. this guy is. Now, let me tell you something. That is blasphemy beyond blasphemy beyond blasphemy. And he should be hung up by his toenails. <laughs> he really should. He yeah, totally should. I mean, I'm speechless on that. I can't yeah, imagine I'm, anyone being so puffed up. Well, you know, you have to be possessed to do something like that. You have to be really full of yourself and full of something else in order for that to happen. Because what you're doing is you're downplaying the creator. You're acting like the creator can't make things happen. And that's just not the way it is. But this man had some influence over the forefathers. He had influence over the Constitution based on the reason doctrine, which is based, you know, again, like I said, they're, they worship the, the goddess reason. So, therefore, their doctrine of reason and the Illuminati and all of that is what the Constitution is really based on. If you look at the Constitution, there's nothing in there mentioned about God, but yet people will slam that in your face to heartbeat. We need to stick to our Constitution. Really? We need to stick to our Constitution? Dude, that's not even biblical. That 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 piece of paper, and yeah, it is a good piece of paper to have, but look at the people who put it together, and there's no mention of God whatsoever. And I'm going to get into that also. There is no no God in it, and God should be the basis for everything. Yeah, it should be. It should be. Now, Colossians 2, 8, I mean, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, clearly says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We need to beware, but we're not, be, we, we're not taking heed to this. We seem no. to like philosophy. I don't know why people think philosophy makes you smart. So philosophy actually makes you a little stupid because you, you can only your understanding is only going to go but so far. You are That's unable true. to think outside. I mean, think about it. You're unable to think outside the box because you've never been outside of it. You don't even know how to get outside the box, more or less to think yeah. outside of it. And the philosopher <laughs> so, is just one man's mind. You're stuck in, in that person's mind, and that person isn't even seeing the whole picture. That's true. That is really true. You know, it, it's it's a sad thing. It's just sad. It's just sad. Also, you know, First Corinthians chapter two verse thirteen clearly states this: which things also we speak not in the words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And that's one thing that the founding fathers don't realize is that these are spiritual things that are taking place. So get your reasoning out of it. This ain't got nothing to do with your mind. This has to do with God's mind, you mm-hmm. know, so let's, let's, let's be real about this. But the Statue of Liberty, to be honest with you, I don't care whether it's black, blue, yellow, green, or, or purple. The whole purpose of why it's here is, is a signal to the country and the rest of the world that this country is on board with the Illuminati agenda and is under Freemason control. And anybody who knows anything about the two knows it is occultic and demonic and satanic. So we're Very. already under the, we're already, and it's also signaling to the spirit realm that we are antichrist. We're under that antichrist spirit, and that's mm-hmm. not good. That is not good. Not good at all. No. Our country, uh, to me, that is just a sign of doom from the beginning. Mm-hmm. If you're not based, you know, your life is not Christ-based, and here you have this giant idol, <laughs> you pretty much you're saying that you're just giving your whole country over to the devil. That That's pretty much it. It's, it's, it's pretty much it. You know, and, and what a lot of people don't also know is that with the Illuminati, you know, in, when you think of Illuminati, you know, you have to think of themselves as the enlightened ones because that's what they call themselves. But did you know they're very liberal? They're, they no. are extremely yeah, they're very liberal. They are a liberal society. They're a liberal secret society. That's why we have the agendas that's going on right now. Notice all the agendas that's being pushed right now. They're very liberal agendas that are being pushed. Think about it. Hmm. From the different type of lifestyles to the different types of, you know, to the education, to health care. Right. These, are, these are liberal agendas. But the Illuminati is very liberal. And people don't know that. People don't know that. Again, we're so caught up in whatever it is we're caught up in, which I don't even know what we're caught up in, but we need to get out of it <laughs> and start looking yeah, at okay. what's, you know, I mean, 
Go to Pearl Vision, Lens Crafter. Get some eye glasses. See what's going on. I don't, I don't care what you got to do, but do something. Because, you know, have a little talk with Jesus. Get on your knees, you know. Say, Lord, open my eyes. I'm blind. You know, mm-hmm. I know I think I see, but I ain't seeing. I mean, there's a lot I'm not seeing. And give me some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because I'm dumb and stupid as can be. You going to let me keep walking around like this? <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't go on. I just can't. I just, I just can't. Man. I need some help, you know. You have to get there and, and talk to Jesus and say, man, I need some help. I realize I need help now. I realize I need to see what's going on. I realize I need to know what the history is. I realize that I need to know where I'm living and who I'm living with. Because a lot of people mm-hmm. don't know the country. A lot of people don't know the country they're living in. I've got to keep saying that. And you're right. Do you think that the Illuminati, part of the agenda from the beginning was Maybe not to create a nation that thrived, but to create a nation that was filled with with the Illuminati, that they knew that some people that they could control and it would make the country fall from within, oh, and it would give them the ultimate reign. Oh, don't get me started on that. Please, you opening up another can of worms we can't put back in the can. I mean, just... <laughs> I hit that button, didn't I, Mary? You know, you know what you did? You just turned on the light and the, ra- the, the roaches just scattered. You know I mean? just <laughs> You ain't going to be able to catch these things now. You're not going to be able to catch these things now. Because you know, that's what you did now. That's, see what you did? See what you did? It oh. is all about control. It has always been about control. It ain't about money. It's not about, you know, uh, social class. It's not about race. And that's something else to people. We need to stop looking at race. Because that is one of the things that that's one of the tools of the Illuminati that that they're using, and of course the Masons are carrying out the agenda. Because we, you know, let's let's face facts: the Masons is what runs a lot of things here. Most presidents, if not all of them, are Masons. Your high mm-hmm. officials are Masons. Your mayor is probably a Mason. The chief of police is probably a Mason. The person who is in charge of the fire department is chances are a Mason. Shoot, you even got. Preachers who are Masons, okay, so let's just face facts. The Masons run a lot of things here, and if you know their agenda, then you obviously know that it's, if you know who, what they're about, you know they're satanic, okay? So what is the whole thing about, just think about what a Satanist does. They, they, they're not in it for the money. They're in it for the control, to be able to control people, Control mm-hmm. spirits, control sp- demons, control that this, power. control that. And that's it's power. That's all it is, baby. It's just power. And you know what? The more power you have, the more control you have. They could care less what we do. They could care less whether we're fighting over black, white issues. They could care less whether or not people got jobs. They could care less about the health care and we going to, you know, bat for this and bat for that and we busting head tea, tea party against the 99 percenters and all this nonsense. They could care less. This is about social engineering and control. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Satan, and it's a battle for souls. Okay, let's not forget that because it's getting late in the hour. And Satan is trying to get all the souls he can get to go to the lake of fire with him, okay? He's trying to steal as many. He's here to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his agenda. That is his agenda. I mean, if you really want to get down and dirty with this, we can go above the Illuminati and start talking about the Council of Nine, Club of Rome, and all that kind of stuff. But we ain't got time for that, so. (laughs) We're not... You know, you get me fired, get me fired up, girl. Get me fired up. Yeah, I'll just have to have you back on again, see? No, 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 no. Then we'll hit all that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's been a question I've had for a while. If that was just the the general root purpose for the origination where, you know, it's just the power. It's the, the power trip. And they don't care whether they get that power from God. Or they get the power from Satan, as long as they have a power. The power that they're looking for, God ain't going to give them. No. So they're going to go, you know what I'm saying? And and not only mm-hmm. that, let's think about this. What's one of, one of the first lies that Satan said in the garden? If you eat this, you will, you know, you will be like God. You will, you, you know, you will be like God. You'll know everything he knows. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, who doesn't want to know everything God knows? Who, who who doesn't want to think of themselves as being a god? Even if you're a little G, you're still a god. I mean, in man's eyes anyway. I mean, it's all about power control. It just, 
it's just crazy all the way around. Right. You know, so, I mean, let's be real. Let's be real. But anyway, let me let me keep this moving because I know I ain't got much time and and, and all of that and, and so forth and so on. But we're going to move on to the next founding father who is really one everybody knows, which is Ben Franklin, that freak of nature. Okay. <laughs> yes, Benny, very much so. <laughs> Benny had a high libido. Did, they, did you know that? I mean, <laughs> yes, I did. You know, and he wasn't attractive, so I don't know what was going on. He must have been slipping people Mickey's or something because he was not attractive. He, Who wants to sleep with that? I mean, I'm a saved woman. And even if I wasn't saved and drunk and high off of ecstasy, there's no way I would feel good enough to want to be with that man. <laughs> you know? No, I heard it's a paid so woman. I heard that was his name. That's how he got with the women was to pay them and even his son uh, oh, that he had he got, he was got from a prostitute. Oh, yeah, Pardon? he got down more than just that, though. He got down a little bit more than that, too. I mean, you know, there was menage a trois and stuff going on, but... But let me give you a little bit of background on this guy. First of all, we all know about, you know, about Benny. I don't want to get him confused with Benny Hinn. This is Ben Franklin. No, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, as you know, he was um, he was a master Masonic. He was the master of one of the Masonic, Masonic lodges in Paris and mm-hmm. in Philly, in Philadelphia. Okay. You, you see you see where I'm going with this? Of course, the thing is, is that at one point in time, Paris was the center of the Illuminists at one point in time. Now, now let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This is really funny. You had, let, let, i got to skip back. Let me skip back. One more thing about Payne. One more thing about Payne. Payne met this guy. He's a Frenchman. Okay. His name was Nicholas Bonneville. And he knew this guy for like five years. He lived with them for like five years. And one of the things that people don't know about this guy is that he was the direct link to the Illuminati in, let me get the word right, Bavaria. He was the direct link. So Ben Franklin hooked up, believe it or not, with Thomas Paine to have access to Nicholas. Okay? Now, like I said, Thomas Paine, he lived with this guy for five years. from So from 1797 to 1802 is when he lived with them. And they used to have menage a trois. Dude and his wife. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> they getting down Whoa. and getting dirty. Yeah, they getting funky with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're doing what the Barquet song said. Do it till you're satisfied, no matter what it is. You know, just, <laughs> they were doing some things that were just not <laughs> right. And I, I mean, I'm sure God was like, oh, my God. I mean, God was probably saying that to himself. Oh, my God. You know, this this is mm-hmm. not right. This is sin on sin on sin on sin on sin. Okay, this is oxyclean. You can't get this out. You really need Jesus for this one because this man is dirty. All right? And that's some of the things that they were doing. You know, Payne was also an original Freemason. Well, he was an original Freemason, but the thing is, is that Ben Franklin was using Payne to get to Nicholas because that would give him a link to the Illuminati. Give him a better link. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's all, and that's all about power, too. See, as they say, get in where you fit in. And he was trying to get in where he fit in so that he could have more power and more influence on how this country is going to be put together and how it's going to be, you know, it's contingent on what he can get and the knowledge and all this other nonsense. Right. He was getting his so numbers was, filled up. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just, it's just one of the things now... Can I tell you somebody else that was real close with dude? Washington was. And we're going to really? get into Washington. Washington. Yeah, Washington got some stuff with him. Man. And he may be quiet, you know, he quiet but carry a big stick. No, he was quiet and carried some other stuff. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I mean don't, don't, don't start me, man. Just, just don't start me. I mean, but, you know, it, it's just to get to go back a little bit. You know, he was um, also the uh, Congress committee secretary for the foreign affairs from 1777 to 1779. And he helped with the French constitution. Now, for those of you who are listening, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, remember what I said about French revolution. I mean, the French constitution, the French constitution, the treaty of Tripoli has a lot to do with what's in our constitution. And when you start looking at that stuff, your eyebrows are going to curl, and you're going to rub your eyes, 
and you could be like, what in the world were these people thinking, and how could we let this happen? And the reason why we're able to let it happen is because nobody in Congress was really a Christian. That's why things are the way they are right now. That's why things have passed the way they are right now. It's, it's crazy. Okay? But I'm going to give you some references here. It is. It is. And it's actually quite scary, to be honest with you, because, like I said, they, they denied, they were denying the gospel, and they didn't want to build a country off of the gospel at all. And I'm going to say something here. According to First John chapter 2, verse 22, King James Version Bible only, y'all, who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. And that's exactly what these cats did. They would not that's give right. Jesus his props. They wouldn't give Jesus his props. And they just want to go ahead and build this country based on their own religion and knowledge. And that's why we got the problems we have right now, you know. I would also read that the Freemasons, that uh, they believe that all the religions are valid. Uh, all they have to have to do is believe that there's a supreme being and that it doesn't mm-hmm. even have to be Christ. So you can believe right. in Lucifer, and that can be part of a, a religion, well, let me and that's valid like, for them. The Masons are, are, in order to join the Masons, you have to believe in something. How about that? Something. It could be mm-hmm. anything. It could be Lucifer. It could be Vishnu. It could be Buddha. It could be Muhammad. It could be Jesus. It could be some, you know, new age whatever called lamb. I mean, it could be whoever. Right. But you had to be in something. And when you take your oath, you take the oath on whatever religious Bible you believe in. So it could be the Quran. It could be the, the Vulcan Bible, which is a Catholic Bible. It could be, you know, the, the NIV. It could be the, it could be anything. It could right. be the Bible you wrote yesterday. It could be the Bible you wrote yesterday. Okay. <laughs> And cram. Like, okay, so. <laughs> well, like the Bible that Washington took his uh, presidential oath on was from his Freemason Lodge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, I'm, that, I'm telling you. Hmm. Oh, man. I mean, you know, if I could go back in time and not be a slave, I would have smacked the wooden teeth right off this man's head. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? You know, but that that's, you know, Ben, like I said, Ben Franklin had a lot to, you know, he did a lot of freaky stuff. He was in the Hell Fire Club. And of course, the Hell Fire Club was in England. And um, a lot of people don't realize that he had a place in England and they found some bones. Now, Ben Franklin was known as being a freak. He was a freak of all natures. I mean, this man... The Hellfire Club, let me tell you what they had over top of the Hellfire Club doorway. And some of you might know what this is, and you might say, oh, that's so-and-so. But no, it's not so-and-so. Over top of the doorway of the Hellfire Club, they had a quote that says, do as thou wilt will be the whole of the law. Now, who used to say that? Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley Mm -hmm. got it from them. He got it from them. <laughs> he got it from them. Wow. And it's, you know, I mean, ben, I mean, don't get me wrong. Ben Franklin, he, he was a lot of things. He was a scientist, patriot. He was a spy. People don't realize he was a spy. He was, you know, between the French and England and the U.S., which was the U.S. at the time, but, you know, working on it. He was an inventor. He was a Freemason. He was a Freemason in the Americas, England, and in France, Paris, France. So he was all around full of demons guy. And he's, he he's the only like one that's like, sort. Yeah, well, you're somebody I want to babysit my child, you know? Well, yeah. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, he also signed all the documents, you know, uh, in reference to the U.S., whether it was the Declaration of Independence, you know, the We the People, the U.S. Constitution, the Treaty of, Treaty of Paris. He signed all the documents. He's the only one, okay? One of his quotes that he would say is, original sin was as ridiculous as imputing righteousness. So he didn't believe in original sin. Of course you wouldn't. You like to get butt naked and run around with prostitutes in the Hellfire Club. You like to have menage a trois. You like to also, he practiced Satanism. Yeah, he was having too much fun. Yeah, if you want to call that fun. 
Well, I mean, for him, they have. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Mm. so that that's some of the things he used to do. He used to practice, you know, a little bit of Satanism here and there, dabble in it. And he also, and here's the kicker. I do believe that this man was doing sacrifices because they found in his basement. And let me get the year right here. Let me make sure I get the year right. Here. February 11th, 1998, there was some people working and they dug up 10 bodies in his London home. The bones are about 200 years old. It was four adults and six children. Dude, really? Raven Street, really? Really? And you're going to blame it on, well, you know, I had a doctor that was practicing medicine in my basement, and he would use cadavers. Oh, spare me, man. Spare me. Some of these bones were charred, were burnt. Spare me, dog. Who are you trying to fool? That's you were right. Doing stuff. You had, there were holes. They said some of the skulls had holes drilled into it. Really? Really? That sounds like sacrifices and that there were doctors practicing on people that were alive think? and awake. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing. If if it was a medical thing that was going on, why didn't you give him a proper burial? Why did you bury him so deep in your basement, in the ground? Why did you bury him so deep? Why? Because he knew it was illegal because and he it was wrong. Exactly. You know, he was the one that also, he rejected believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Rejected mm-hmm. it. Dismissed it. Doesn't exist. You know, that's just the way he was. Well, he's always been in my, I mean, I haven't known very much about him until recently, you know, studying some of the things about him. But to me, he's always been a coward. Because you always hear that story about him with the kite and the key and everything, Believe it or not, the child that he had with the prostitute is the mm-hmm. one that he gave the kite with the key tied to it out in the storm while he's standing on his porch. Mm-hmm. Going out there and play. Oh, don't worry about the yeah. next going out there. <laughs> he, he's not wrapped right. <laughs> he was a rap, period. Okay? No. He was a rap, period. You know? And here's another thing, too, a lot of people may have known. The Hellfire Club, that is not their original name. The original name for this club was the Monks of, Mac- of now let me see if I get this right, the Monks of Macmacco Abbey. That was the original name of the Hellfire Club. Okay, and what they used to do is not just with the prostitute and have orgies, they also used to mock traditional religions. So they would mock mm-hmm. God. They would indulge in satanic rites and sacrifices. That's something else they would do. Wow. You know? And it was established. You know who you know who actually established this place? It was a guy by the name of Francis Dashwood. This dude worked for Parliament. And he would take part in the satanic worships just as well. So and got away with it. And got away with it. And so basically, what is this organization? Satanic organization. That's all it is. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And this is your founding father, you know, early to bed, early to wise. Makes a person, whatever, whatever, you know, a apple a day keeps the doctor away. You know, that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> Did you know they still got a Hellfire Club here in uh, New York? I, I don't doubt it. I mean, you got Rockefeller Center there, and that address is 666. Yeah. I mean, really? I mean, I, I don't, you know, they got Prometheus out That's... there where you go and, uh, you know, do your do your skating. The um, mm-hmm. what is it? The light, the the flame stealer, or whatever the whatever he is, or whatever. But it's supposed to be Prometheus or somebody, a deity out right. there like skating the ice. I mean, I don't. I, I, New York got a lot of occultic things. We can get into that some other time because that's one city I've been to. I've been to a lot, and I have no no desire to go back to. It doesn't do anything for me. Just like I only live like thirty two to thirty four miles away from DC, and believe me, I try to stay away from it as much as possible because. Mm-hmm. You do get a you get a, get a special type of feeling when you go to DC. It's a special type of feeling. That's all I got to tell you. Hmm. You know, I've so. never been there. Yeah, d- you ain't and missing nothing. That's what I figured. I don't want to go. <laughs> you don't want to go. You ain't missing nothing. Not missing a thing. But um, mm-hmm. Ben Franklin also, just to keep going with him, you know, he also doubted uh, Jesus's divinity, even though he says his teachings were good. He goes, oh yeah, his teachings were good, but he thinks that. The Bible has corrupt changes in it. And you hear that a lot even today with people saying, well, they don't believe the Bible. They only believe bits and pieces and blurps and 
because they think that certain parts of it doesn't apply because it's been corrupt or it's been changed and, and this, that, and the other, and that's not even the case. Mm-hmm. You know, he compliments the morality of Christ, but he rejects the authority of Christ. It's like, you know, I, I like your moral issues, but uh, you don't have no authority. <laughs> and it's like, dude, really? You going to say that to your creator? Ah. Oh. Yeah, killing. you know, killing. Justin came up with a good name for that. He calls that cherry picking. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. That's exactly what it is. It is cherry picking, for real. And and it's just, it, I, I, I wonder sometimes how this country is able to still be where it is and stand like it's standing. God is really, have he really has mercy on us because in all actuality, we should have been destroyed decades ago. Yes. And, and, I'm, and I mean that. I mean that with all. I mean with everything because we just are. I, I just let me let me just say this. Second Timothy puts it best. Second Timothy chapter three verse one and two. Okay, or better yet, let's go with let's go with this one. Chapter two. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous, or disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Don't that sound like them? <laughs> sure does. It sounds like some people. Sounds like some people today too. Mm-hmm. I mean, just look at our abortion rate, and I mean, it, to me, you can't get much farther from God than what America is right now. Who are you telling? Who are you telling? I mean, we're so far away from God. It's it's a wonder He can hear our prayers. I mean, seriously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank God for His mercy. Yeah, thank God for his mercy and his grace. I mean, he's got some patience with us. He, these children of mine ain't right. He knows it, you know, but it's it's a sad thing. But um that those are the three so far. There there are definitely two more I'm gonna go through. I don't know if you wanna continue or is there a break coming up or what what the deal no, is. Not unless you'd like to have a break. We can just continue. No, no, we can keep going. You know, I can go on okay. I can I can go for a while. Uh, next person, good old Jefferson. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, good, good, good old Jefferson. I need to rewrite the Bible and make it my own. <laughs> I guess the original wasn't good enough. He you was know. not a good man. No, he wasn't. You know, of course he helped to draft the you know Declaration of Independence. You know, he stressed that um, he he was like two faced. He was like, yeah, the, the country is is based off of Christianity. But when he would write his letters, he would say the exact opposite. He was just like a hypocrite. <laughs> just when it fit him. You know, it, he was he was the original politician. He would get up in front of people and say, "Yes, you know this, you know this this country is is definitely founded on Christianity." But then he would write letters back and forth with Adams and and talk about how he don't believe <laughs> in it. And it's like, dude, you are so. <sighs> I don't even know what to t- I don't even know what to call you at this point, you know. But that's what he said. What did he say? He said the Book of Revelations, just to tell you what he thought about it. He said the Book of Revelation was a raving, was nothing more than somebody raving. It was a, it was something that a raving maniac would say. That's what he said about the Book of Revelation. And they say that- he was un- he was unrepented right to the end of his last breath. He never repented. Hmm. I wonder how that went. Because, you know, yeah, after that's death, what I was just thinking. Yeah. You know, after death is judgment. It ain't no purgatory. You don't get to sit on the bench and wait for somebody to pray you out of that. <laughs> after death. No. It's judgment. No. Once okay, you take so, that last breath, that's it. That's it. It's over. Ain't, no, ain't nobody praying you out of nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam. This is the way it is. And, and you got to stand there before God and give an account. And you're going to try to explain that one to him. I'd like to be a fly on the wall for that one. Some popcorn and a Pepsi. Let's see how that goes out, because that could be a good movie right there. <laughs> Somebody's going to hell. <laughs> Somebody is going yeah. to hell. <laughs> sure is, because he can't take it back. I can't imagine standing before God and trying to explain you can. why I just made that comment about his book. You, you can't. That's what you're saying about God, because, you know, that's the word of God. Mm-hmm. You know, and now Jefferson also wrote a book, but we now today we call it the Jefferson book. But the original book, which, like I said, he rewrote the Bible, right? He rewrote his own Bible. You know, today we call it the Jefferson book. But the original book was called The Life 
and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth by Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> uh, that, that's oh, that's this, an oxymoron. This guy. <laughs> I, I just don't know. Sometimes... I just don't know. Sometimes I, I can't say if something was in the water because this is before fluoride, but I kind of was, man. <laughs> it makes me wonder what their parents thought of their kids when they grew up and, and if they were taught differently at home to see them, that would I be, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure if his parents were dead, they would be probably rolling in their graves like rotisserie chicken saying, what? You know? <laughs> Craziness. He also believed that uh, some of what Jesus said was true. <laughs> Notice he said some. He said, he said that? Some. Yeah, he said he believed that some of what Jesus said was true, but was infiltrated and corrupted by inferior minds. That's what, so in other words, he's saying, again, same thing that Ben Franklin said about there's been changes and they're corrupt. <laughs> so they, you notice there's a pattern here. They all think the same way. They all want to use your own intellect, use your own reasoning, your own common sense. If it doesn't make sense, then, you know, it ain't, you know, just just dismiss it. They all have their same reason. That should tell you something. That should tell people something. Yeah, you they know? denied it without even trying it, really. Or and how long have they never to... read it? Oh, I got a feeling they did. For, for the criticisms that they, there's a lot of criticisms. And, again, people, if you want to know what these people wrote, go to the Library of Congress and start poking around the letters of Thomas Jefferson, the letters and memoirs of John Adams, of uh, George Washington, Thomas Paine. I mean, look look these guys up, and you'll be surprised at some of the stuff that these cats say, and it'll make you think twice. Matter of fact, I think you'll probably just turn your computer off and be like, I don't want to see no more. <laughs> I just don't want to see no more mm-hmm. because it's going to force you to wake up. You're either going to want to continue to sleep and just say, I don't want to see no more, or you're going to wake up and, and you're going to be beside yourself. Trust me. If you're not used to hearing this type of stuff, you are going to be beside yourself. Just don't stay beside yourself, okay? Then that's a problem. <laughs> okay. That's right. And sometimes it's easier if you, you go in and, and you just take one name at a time and, and research it at the Library of Congress and let it soak in. Give yourself a chance to adjust to what you just read. And then go back and start picking up the other names because some of it can be overwhelming when you first read it. Mhm, mhm, very overwhelming. Yeah, you know? so it's better sometimes just to take those small doses and just keep going back to get more information, and eventually you'll have it. I'm gonna tell you something else that he said. Like I said, I know a lot of them said a lot of them said a lot of stuff, but he was the most vocal of them all. When it comes down to all of this stuff in his writing, he denounced the Old and the New Testament. He pretty much said the Ten Commandments aren't real. That has really? been tampered with. Yep, that has been tampered with. That's what he believes. He Basically, uh-huh. what he, he said, you know, you really believe that God took his finger and wrote on some rocks. That's not real. That's what he, that's what he said. Mm-hmm. It's been tampered with. He doesn't believe in the power of God, but he believes in the power of Satan. He, he exactly. He also believes the Bible was put together by inferior minds. He also, you know, he, he his now now check this out. But his Bible, his so-called Bible, omits a lot of supernatural stuff. So, like I said, he rewrote the Bible for himself. He took out every miracle, every type of supernatural thing that was done in the Bible. He took it away. He took it out from the Red Sea parting to all the plagues that happened in Egypt to Jesus walking on water. Paul talking to Jesus on his way to Damascus. He took away everything, the virgin birth. He took away Lazarus mm-hmm. rising from the dead. He took away Jesus, you know, rising from the dead. He took away all the ascension into heaven. He took away everything that was supernatural and said, this you know, is what really matters. What's that? It reminds me of Hitler when he wrote his, had his own Bible written. Well, well, we could go there too. But <laughs> all comes from the same. Yep. They don't fall apart from the tree from each other. They surely don't. A nut is a nut is a nut is a nut. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, a nut is a nut. A nut that falls that's on a tree that was planted in seventeen hundred. If that nut is still, if that tree is still there in the nineteen hundreds, that nut is still a nut off of that tree. It's just same Amen. nut. <laughs> it's the 
the best of the way. You can sure tell by the fruit they bore. Yeah, they ain't got no fruit. <laughs> what that is. <laughs> I have to agree that, with you. He said that Paul was the first corrupter of the Bible. Uh, did you hear that? Yes, I did, and it kind of took my speech. He said, uh, now, now, again, I got to go back. People, you really think this country was built on Christianity and on Christian principles. It was not. When your founding fathers think like this, it's telling you right then and there, this is not a country built on Christ. It's mm-hmm. built on satanic and occultic principles. Face the facts. I mean, look at your money. Look at your, I can't say money, so-called money. Pieces of paper with value on it, which has no value. <laughs> okay? That's right. Look at that. It's just as occultic I see so much Egyptian symbology and occultic symbols and little demons on this thing. It's not even funny, and people don't even realize it. it, it, it matter of fact, we want it. Isn't that something? Why would you want that? <laughs> you know? Mm-mm. But but he said Paul is the um, first corrupter, and he basically says reason plays a big part in uh, in Jefferson's thought pattern and his philosophy. So, again, we're going back to reason the goddess reason, the doctrine of reason, and all of that. He also believed that mass murdering of people is necessary in order to achieve the ultimate goal, okay, to make... So he um, was the original Agenda 51 person. Or pretty much. Agenda 21? Agenda 21, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's, he was the one, he said, if it, t- if it takes that and you had to wipe out a whole country and only leave one man and one woman and start back over so that you can get what you want, then, you know, is well worth it. So, really, he has no regard for human life. No. You know, and you you ever heard of the Georgia Godstones? A lot of people say, oh, that's fake or whatever the case may be, but there is some, some, uh, there's a thing on it that people overlook. They just look at, you know, oh, yeah, maintain population at 500 million and, you know, don't deplete, don't be a cancer upon the earth and all of that. You know, they got their little Ten Commandments. But there's something else that people overlook on the Georgia Godstones. There's a statement that says, let there be guidestone to an age of reason. You see that? I didn't know that. Age of reason. When's the last time we saw that? Who wrote that? That that goes back to Thomas Paine. That's what I was just thinking. Goes back to him. And people just read it and just overlook it because they don't understand what it really means. So it makes you wonder, is it really fake? Is it just something to distract you, or is there some hidden meat behind it? It makes you wonder if it could have been from his time. What was that? And not earlier. I mean, it really makes you wonder if it could be the Georgia Guidestones from back in the day of Thomas Paine and that they're not any older than that. Well, according to what was said about the Georgia Godstone, some mysterious man used a pseudo name, went up to this guy, knocked on the door, said he wanted to put some monument there and bought a little piece of plot land for him, gave him some money for it, and then next thing you know there were some stones there. <laughs> I mean, you know, the guy uh, they don't even they don't even know who the guy is because he used a pseudo name. He didn't even use his real name. So you know, and of course the guy that got the money, you know, sold him that little sliver of land so he could put the monument there and he's saying nothing. I mean he's rich. And right, he, never he know got what, what he wanted. What, he got what he wanted, and he could have been threatened or anything, anything, you know. So, you know, that that's a story. That's a different story altogether. But like I never heard that about it. Yeah, check it out. Go, go, you know, look it up on Google, and you know, just type it in. You know, type in "Age of Reason" Georgia Godstones and see if it shows that little part on it. That that's just the way it is. Now, last but not least, with him is that uh. He was hoping that the gospel would just dis- would be destroyed in the new world. In other words, he was hoping that people would get away from the word of God as time progressed, as the United States comes of age and as it gets older, that it just kind of weans its way out. And can I tell you something? It's happening because people yeah. right now are not adhering to the word of God. People uh, actually, I mean, you've got all these other religions coming. Islam is a big thing right now. They're trying to instill Sharia law and you know, they're waiting for their Mahdi and all this other nonsense. And, and we have become a melting pot of not just ethnicities, but we've become a melting pot of different religions. And now one religion is trying to dominate another. you got atheism, 
atheists who are basically trying to dictate what Christians can do and what they can't do, where they can read their Bibles, where they can't read their Bibles. Kids can't even read their Bibles in school on their own lunch break. You know, you can't even say a prayer. Right. You can't do anything, you know, and, and this is what we get. This is what's happening right now. I mean, you even got churches out here, mega churches that aren't preaching the gospel anymore. They're watering down their sermons according to whatever the government says that they have to say based on, the, you know, and that's based on the fact that they're 503C, whatever type of part that they're, you know, they're a part of that. So they can't do the fire and brimstone services anymore. They can't talk about repenting. They can't talk about sin. They can't talk about deliverance. They can't talk about coming to God. They can't, you know, they can't do anything. They're giving people these feel-good sermons now. And so what's happening, the gospel is actually being taken away. We are finding the great falling away. That is happening. It's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call this another uh, visitation to the Reformation era. Mm -hmm. Because people are having to get licenses, I've heard out in California, to hold church at home or have Bible studies. Right. Um, They're trying to make it that if you're a Christian, you're supposed to hide it. Well, they're And that's not what being a Christian is about. They're infiltrating the church in in a lot of different ways. Now, you've got undercover cops who are coming in acting like they're members just to see, just to make sure that these churches that are 503C are, well, I'm sorry, 501. 3C, um, yeah, are actually, you know, preaching the way they want them to preach, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and that's that's a sad thing because what's happening is people are not really getting the true word of God. They're getting the watered down version, and that's and and there's some days coming that's going to require it's going to require people to you know they're going to need the whole foundation. They need they, it's hard to put on the whole armor of God when you don't have the whole armor. Amen. You know, and and that's exactly what's happening. You know, they're not giving people the, you know, the the armor at all. I mean, you know, somebody, I'm getting something on my phone right now with somebody, I guess somebody's listening and saying that, you know, the Sabbath is really on Saturday, not Sunday. And that's true. And the reason why Mm -hmm. I was switched to, the reason why I was switched to Sunday, and and that's something that we can get in later, because all of this goes together. All of this goes together. You know, we can get into Jesuits and all that kind of stuff, so... (laughs) But, you know, the, the reason why this is happening is because when the time comes for them to make their move, people really won't have no good foundation. They really don't. They, you don't know your Bible. You don't know the word of God. That means you don't have the sword. You don't even have the sword. More or less no. the armor. <laughs> you don't have anything that you don't have God. You don't have nothing to, to fight with, and you have nothing mm-hmm. to protect yourself. <laughs> That's you just, right. But naked, and that's spiritually. <laughs> and the and the thing is that the the people that are out there, the the pastors, the ministers, ministers, evangelists, all of them, we're all held to a higher standard. Mm-hmm. Because we're the ones that are out there. We're sharing God's word. We have to make sure that it's correct. That we're leading the fold to God the way that He said that we're supposed to. And what we have to answer for when we go before him is not only for the way we lived our lives, but also for the way that we have have shepherded his people. And if we lie to them and send them in the wrong direction, our punishment is much, much worse than the person that we led astray. Oh, definitely. I mean, you got somebody's blood on your hands. You really do. Yes. My dad was, um, like I said, my dad was a preacher. He's, He's gone now. He went to be with the Lord and... I'm sure he's having a good time up there. I'm jealous. Mm. But anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our no, friends come and marry. You know, it won't I'm, be I'm long. God will be here. Yeah, let's, let's put it this way. They, either God will be here or they'll kill us. Okay? Either way, we're going to be with the Lord. Right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, you know, but, <laughs> but but the point of the matter is, is that he used to always say there's going to be a lot of preacher's skull bones in hell because they didn't do what they were supposed to do according to God's law. And that is true. And he always used to say, so you don't want to play around with this stuff. You want to make sure that people get the correct information because, after all, you are held at, like you said, a higher standard. And God will judge you differently because you are held. You're a shepherd. You're a shepherd. It's just no different than a parent who has children. You're a parent and you have children. You don't take care of your kids. Guess what's happening? You ain't recommended for that. Your kids going to be taken away and your kids get destroyed because you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. And now you're, you know, you got to go through what you do. You're going to get punished for that. And it's the same thing. It's no different. No. Absolutely no different. 
if you're going to spread God's word, you need to spread it right. You know, spread it. Spread it. And and I know this is a subject that a lot of people are not going to be really happy about hearing. I'm sorry. (laughs) You know, I I feel bad for you because of the fact that you're not accepting it. But like Hosea 4, 6, I got to go back here again. You know, my people are destroyed due to lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. I mean, that's the basis of my show on on Next Chapter Radio. I'm a strong believer in you got to know. You Mm -hmm. have to know what's going on. I mean, if you don't, what's the point? You know, I'm not going to give yeah. you just some watered-down stuff. You can forget that, Jack. You're looking for watered-down. You can go to Creflo Dollar Church or somebody or T.D. Jakes or Osteen. You can get all the water you want there. <laughs> <laughs> or Benny Hinn. <laughs> yeah, go to Benny Hinn, you know. You know, start looking at the TBN network or something, you know, something like that. I mean, just just some feel-good stuff and Joyce Myers. <laughs> yeah, and it's sad for how, how many people just fall for that because, it's what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I've heard people say before um, on the interviews, you know, why do you sin? Why do you do this? Or why do you do that? And they say, because it's fun. I well, had a person yesterday tell me when we were talking about, you know, because yesterday was really a rough day. I did an emergency show yesterday that basically had to do with defending your sin. Why do people defend the sin they're in or just defend sin, period? And the reason why they defend it is because they don't want to face it. Because when they face it, they're they're going to get convicted. And when you get convicted, you're now held accountable, and now you have to do something about it. People don't want to be held accountable for the things they do. Instead of just going ahead and being like good little boys and good little girls and say, okay, I screwed up. I need to know how to not screw up anymore. No, we'd rather just attack the person who's saying something and, you know, so we can continue doing what we're doing. And unfortunately, we've got a lot of people in this world who think the same way. You know, I had one, like I said, I had one person who said, why do you want to point out somebody's sin? I'm like, okay, so let me get this straight. You don't want that sin pointed out, but I guarantee you it would be okay if I pointed out somebody was raping a little kid. Now, that's a sin, okay? Or if somebody was cursing and swearing at their mother real bad, that's a sin. Or if somebody stole something from you, that's a sin. You wouldn't mind people talking about these three things, but don't touch this sacred cow over here. Don't touch that. You know, what's the difference? A sin is a sin in the eye of a God. All of it needs to be addressed. So One is just look, as bad as the other. Exactly. People don't like being convicted because when they're convicted, they have to confront it. They have to confront it. And you got to ask yourself, and, and, and you, it makes you, it, it's, 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 it comes down to basically you have to ask yourself what type of person you are. You're going to continue doing the thing that ain't right or are you going to correct it? Mm-hmm. Even though the thing that ain't right may feel good, look good, taste good, is you know, it is good in your sight, but in the sight of God, it's not good for you at all. It's sinful. It's right. wrong. So you have to hold that mirror up in front of you and actually look. Yeah, a lot of people who look are delusional though. They look in the mirror and still see something good. I, I mean, you know, it's like it's like that. Yeah. Pardon me for saying it's like that fat person and the it's that fat person who sees that six pack. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. I'm sexy. Right. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sad person. Yeah. You know, and that's how yeah. some people look at look at the sin they're in. I mean, it's just like you know, you get people who I see some wild stuff on my timeline on Facebook. People do some wild stuff. Wild stuff. They'll say something like, "Yeah, I'm a child of God, a woman of God, a man of God." But then they put up pictures that's like, are you participating in a porn? What is this? You know, and they're in it. Right. You know? I, I'm confused now. You've just confused me. I'm just totally confused, baffled, and I'm, I just don't get it. You pick a side. <laughs> you know, even even the Twix commercial makes you pick a side. Left or right, we pick a side. The Twix commercial, <laughs> you got to pick a side. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. The Twix commercial makes you pick a Oh my goodness! You know you're gonna be in or out, in or out. I mean, pick a side, man. Anybody <laughs> got time for this confusion? No. But anyway, we we kind of got off course a little bit, a little bit, you know. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're gonna move on real quick. Okay, we're, we're gonna go ahead and go to John Adams. John Adams, man, this guy right here worked with Jefferson. As you know, they were kind of tight, even though they were they had friction between them. They didn't always see eye to eye on a lot of things, but they were like the best of friends. They really were. What people don't know about John Adams, and a lot of people think John Adams was a Christian because he went to church. But guess what church he went to? He went to a Unitarian church. 
You know what Unitarians believe? They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in that. So what do they believe in? (sighs) Well, I mean, is it just do they see that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are are just three different entities, or that they're just, some of they're them just, don't exist. They they just they they don't they're not three and one one and three. Gotcha. That's, okay. Okay. That's what they don't believe. They don't believe in the Trinity. All right. Hmm. Now, <laughs> yeah. How about it? Now he believes that the country did better or would do better, and is now when in his time when once they got it founded that it was founded on Christian and pagan philosophies. So it's an intertwining of both. Now, I want you to think about that. You can kind of see it. You can kind of yeah. see it. Okay? And it is. It's a it's an intertwining of both. But unfortunately, light has no business being with darkness and darkness with light. Them, they, you know what I'm saying? Those two just don't get along. So really, what he's saying is kind of contradictive. It's really pagan. But he's saying that, well, it's a little bit of Christian in there. No, boo-boo, it's pagan. <laughs> That's right. You know, and he basically says the revolution period principles were based off of Aristotle. And for those of you who have read Aristotle, if you haven't, you need to. I'm not going to bust you. I'm not going to bust you with that, all of that knowledge. Aristotle, Plato, <laughs> nature, and reason. There we go with the reason again. Okay. Notice all of them like the reason. They like the reason. Okay, so they, it, it, he also likes, I think his name is Russ, Russell, R-O-U-S-S-E-A-U. He likes that guy, and he also likes Von Von Terre. The Von Terre is French. Now, let me tell you what Von Terre, this, these are the people that he likes, that Adams likes. Let me tell you what Von Terre said. This guy should be busting hell wide open. They should have, he should be down there with gasoline drawers just dancing right now. He should have a special place in hell or set on a temperature that that is definitely unreadable with this statement that he says here. Okay? Christianity mm-hmm. is the most ridiculous, the most absurd, and blood relig- bloody religion that has ever entered the world. Oh, my that's what he said. And and John Adams likes him. He, he thinks that he's right. <laughs> uh, well, him and, and Voltaire must be together then. Yeah. yeah they're both dancing in flames. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Getting tormented right now. Cut off from God. Just cut well, off. Well, if I remember right, Voltaire wasn't a very nice person. No, he wasn't. Mm. Not at all. You know, another quote that this guy said, was that it took 12 ignorant fishermen to establish Christianity. I will show that I will show the world how one Frenchman can destroy it. Talk about centric? Talk about balls. Talk about an ego. Talk about an ego greater than Rodin. I mean, really? This is how this is you say you say that out your mouth? <laughs> That's such blasphemy. That is that is blasphemy with a capital B. All the letters in blasphemy are caps. <laughs> Every one mm-hmm. of them. And bold. And italic. And underlined. <laughs> I mean, this, he, is just, <laughs> he, is just, he is just, oh, my goodness. I mean, how you fix your lips to say that, you know? How could you function thinking that way? You function that way because your master is not Jesus Christ, but Satan. I mean, think about it. Satan has a lot of people out here functioning. And they seem like they're successful and knowledgeable and uh, they seem like they are spiritual or religious or whatever the case may be, learned men and women, but they're just as dead as can be on the inside. Spiritually, they are dead. True. This seems like it'd be such a miserable life. It, it, it can, Well, you know, again, I want you to think about this. People that are serving Satan right now and don't even realize they're doing it, they may seem like they're having a good life. They got the job they want. They got the kids they want. They live in the house they want. They got money. They got, you know, when I say money, I mean they got millions. You know, they got mm-hmm. they go on vacation. You know, and to them, that's the good life. But in the meantime, they done sold their soul to the devil. So it's to true. them, they're, they're having their reward right now. That's what they're mm-hmm. getting right now. You know, and and that's just not cool. Now, 
I want to let you know something. When John Adams says religion, he does not mean the gospel. He really doesn't. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about John Adams as far as him being a you know a Unitarian that doesn't believe in, in the Trinity. He also didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God or God manifest in the flesh. And you know what the scripture said about that. If you don't believe that, then you're, you're the Antichrist. That's right. Okay, so we've already established that. And the reason why he thought that was because he believed no one could know God. And that goes against scripture all day long. Completely. You know, his root, his real root in his religious beliefs are a combination, really. It's Unitarian, and it, there's an Indian belief that he believes in. This is book. And, but it all stems from Shasta. Okay, that's what it all stems from. That's what he really believes, which is Shasta, which is his God. Created Burma, Vince now, and Sid. These are Indian-based religions. So he was the only, only one that's kind of like out the box, but still, eh, you know. That's kind of like a person mixing uh, being a, a Muslim with being a Buddhist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of, sort of. Is that yeah, crazy? Or, it, yeah, I mean, it's like one would you would think would cancel out a lot from the other. <laughs> evil cancel out <laughs> evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> Is that even possible? No, I don't think so. I think it just gets to be a bigger evil. Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. I've never heard that before about him. Yeah, he's there's a lot. I mean, like I said, Library of Congress, do some research. You'll find it. Now, he was also, now th- Now we're going to get into a little bit of, of a little bit more here. He was also involved in the Treaty of Tripoli from 1796 to 1797, which is proof that this nation that we're living in would not be set up as Christian. And, and I'm going to prove that. Okay. He, there, was this, there was this guy. He was a reverend, right? His name was Reverend Bird Wilson. He used to investigate all the religions of the founding fathers, every one of them, okay? That's, that was his job. That's what he did. And when he was asked straight out, was the founding fathers, do you think they were Christians? After all the spiel that he gave, he turned around and said no. He said they weren't. Now, on top of that, just to let you know something, like I said, God is not in the Constitution. I said that earlier. But in Article 11 of the Treaty of Tripoli, which is what our Constitution is based off of, the government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. That is in Article 11 of the Treaty of Tripoli. And it was decided by Congress that the country would not be a Christian country. So why in the world are we continually saying we're a Christian nation. I, I I just don't know. I mean, are we are, did we get hit with a stupid stick or what? Are, are we that programmed and like I said, manipulated and and indoctrinated and ma cult, ultra mind controlled? <laughs> you know that we really. I mean, is the media bombarding you with this type of nonsense that you really are believing what they're saying? And, and I mean, even though Congress has said it's not going to be set up that way, we still go through life saying. Oh, we're a Christian nation. Stop it. It's just awful. You know, I, I just don't know what to say. And and I, I, I wish people would stop saying it. But I know we lacked on time, so I'm going to say this one real quick. Last but not least, Mr. George Washington, Mr. Small Words. You know, he don't say much. This is the guy. He would go to church. He would go to an Episcopal church. He would go to, he would sit through the service. But when it was time for community to be served, He'd just walk out. <laughs> That's what he would do. Got to the point where his preacher got tired of it, pulled him up, actually mentioned him in a sermon, you know, that, you know, people shouldn't be leaving, you know, should partake in the communion. It doesn't look good. You're a person of high stature and you really need to, you know, at least take the, you know, take communion. So, you know, he knew it and he didn't try to fight it. He didn't give him any mixed words or anything. He said, yeah, I got Reproved. I got reproved. Mean he got, you know, corrected. He got reprimanded by the preacher that he's not taking communion. So you know what he did? He said, you know what? I'm just not going communion Sunday. The, the Sunday they have communion, I just won't show up. That way he don't have to worry about me walking out. He refused to take communion. What's that about? <laughs> you know, that's that's something to think about. 
Are you still there or are you gone? Oh, I think I lost her. I think I lost her. You dropped Hello, off. Richard. Where'd you go? Hello? Okay, where'd you go? Where did you go, Kay? I'm here. They dropped me. I, I heard you and I tried to an- when I got back tried to answer you and I was just dropped. So what, what, what I'm did, back. What, what did you miss, Kay? I heard you talking about uh coming in, uh not taking communion and oh, okay. I said and I made the statement and, and apparently I was muted during that. I said, You're either all in for God or you're not in at all. Exactly. All in, all in. That's what you need to say, all in. But like I said, mm-hmm. you know, do do you know, he got reprimanded by his by his preacher, the preacher got on him and said, you know, you're you're you know, you're supposed to be this this pillar in society and all this other nonsense and you know, it doesn't look good for a person of your stature and your you know, your status to be walking out in the middle of service just because we're getting ready to serve community. He said, Okay, okay. So you know what he did? He decided I'm just not gonna go those Sundays. I mean, you're still not taking communion, knucklehead. I mean it's, you're just not walking <laughs> out now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, people are still going to notice that. But they, for the longest time, during his whole term, two terms as a president, they they could not pin him down as to what his religious affiliation was. The other ones, you knew what they were. You know, they told Mm -hmm. you, you know, I don't believe in this, I don't believe in that, you know. But watch two and not say what he believed in. But it came down to it. Apparently, they had some, you know, when he was getting ready to leave office, he finished his two terms and... I guess it's like an exit interview, you know, and the preachers got together and they said, okay, we're going to come up with some questions and we're going to just, you know, we're going to hash this out. We're going to find out what his religious affiliation is and, and whatnot. They finally, his, his, his pastor, Dr. Um, Abercrombie or whatever his name is, Abercrombie, A-B-E-R-C-R-O-M-B-I-E. This guy says that Washington, when they finished everything, Washington was a deist. He was a deist. That's what he was. He was a deist. But they're saying that on his deathbed, though, that he called for a Jesuit priest to come and baptize him into the Catholic faith, Roman Catholic faith. So there's there's mixed things going on. The slaves are saying, yeah, he did convert, you know, because they were there by the bedside, and he did convert before he took his last breath, and he, you know, he died as a Catholic. But that whole time during his life, he was a deist, deist. So. That was that was. No wonder kinda... he didn't want anyone to know. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Like I say, what's you know from the Bible, what's done in the dark is going to come to light. You can't mm-hmm. hide anything, no matter how good you think you can do it. It's going to come out. Now there's a possible connection, but we ran we ran out of time. There's a connection between between him and the and the Jesuits, and the Jesuits actually play a big part in the Constitution and in the way this country is actually ran. So the Pope has really got his fingers all up in this, and we mm-hmm. don't even realize Because I heard he's Jesuit, the first Jesuit Pope. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell somebody this. You know, if, if people want to give a little bit more information, look up the Declaration of Indulgence. Uh, that has to go with the uh, religious freedom or religious liberty. That's one of the things that was written into the Constitution that, you know, you, you could pretty much have. You have the, the right to worship however you choose to worship, whatever you choose to worship. You have religious freedom here. But with that religious freedom, you get things like this, what's going on now. Now this stuff is backfiring on us. You know, that means you could be a Satanist, a Buddhist, you could be this, you could be that, you could be the other. You can invoke all sorts of evil spirits. And, you know, if that's your religion, that's your religion, and we can't trample on that. But yet what's happening right now is the Christian faith is being trampled on left and right. And Christians, we are not doing anything. We're not doing anything. We need to start standing up and making some noise. We need to be I, I, I wish we were as zealous as these Muslims. These Muslims really believe what they believe, and they show it. We believe what we believe, but we don't show it. There's a problem. There's a problem. There's a disconnect. You know, they have a fire in them, whatever that fire is, and they ain't the right fire, but it's a fire that makes them do whatever it is they do. I think it's demonic, but we have a fire, too, better known as the Holy Ghost. So we need to tap into that, and, and we need to stand up. It's time. Yes, we do. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Yes. And on that note, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Mary, it's been so to... wonderful having you on tonight. I've learned so much, and I've taken so many notes. Oh. I've, it's been such a blessing to have you. Uh, I've never talked so fast in my life for two hours. <laughs> 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 and and I, oh. I need another chair. This this chair that I'm sitting there, in, I'm actually in my studio, and 
this chair is very uncomfortable. <laughs> got to get you a new studio chair, huh? Yeah, I got to get a, a, either that or I need more cushion behind me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm going to get the chair because I don't think I'm going to get any more cushion. What I got is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like very much um, – New down the road, it'd be wonderful to have you back. It's been wonderful. And would you mind leading us in our closing prayer tonight? And I want to thank all the listeners and love you all. God bless you. I hope you have a great week. And uh, God bless everyone. Yes, definitely. So. All right, let's go ahead and uh, close out. You know, just bow your heads for a short word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for the fellowship in which we had tonight. I hope and pray that somebody was able to get edified by the information that was given here tonight. This world that we live in is not our home. We know that in due time, you're going to come and get us, that we're going to be with you in glory. But for now, we need to understand where we are in this world. We need to understand that the prince of darkness is here to kill, steal, and to destroy us by all means necessary, from the knowledge that's being given to the very things that we put in our bodies. He is trying to destroy the very image of God, which is us, which is what you built, which is what you made, which is man, which is woman. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for the hedge of protection that you had around us and the listeners as we dive and dove into all of this intricate stuff. And I thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night, everyone. Take care and stay blessed. And thank you, Mary. Good night and God bless you. God bless Mm. you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.